This is another client garden that we're starting this week. As you can see, the biggest issue with vegetable garden prep um, in this garden is the weeds. Lots of chickweed, but there are some perennials mixed in for pretty, like peonies, but they have pretty cool raised beds. They have some stone in the walkways. So we're just gonna clean up and cut back all the perennials that are um, in these gardens and then really start to lay out and plant in some cool season crops as well as some herbs. See, so look at, we did some peonies planted in this garden on the four corners. And then this is kind of like a cut flower garden in the front here. But what I think I'm gonna do this year is maybe do some herbs around the border of the peonies and then do some taller annuals flowers in the center. So just to make that pretty, this is kind of a hodgepodge of things. So we'll probably do some shorter, um, shorter zinnias. And then we have some cut flowers and such as snapdragons, things like that going in. Definitely have to take out these mustards. So that's our job today. That's what we're tackling. So day one progress. Take a look. You can tell we got everything weeded. We got compost. All the beds look ready to go. This is the best part about spring. Seriously, everything is like new and, uh, well, when it's weeded, it's nice and new and ready to go. Let's see. So we planted some lettuces. Um, and also some scallions because onions and lettuce go really well together. They're great companion plants. I also like doing mixing up the colors and the varieties because it just looks pretty. I corralled all of the perennials in this bed and put them into one center garden. I've been wanting to do that for a while um, because usually when we get here, it's a little late in the season and then they're already really up and growing so you don't wanna disturb them. But this year we're early enough or spring is late enough that we're able to get this as the perennial bed. So I'm excited about that because that means I will have more room to kind of move around and plant how I want instead of planting around things. We got this rosemary. Oh my gosh, look at the size of these. So they put three plants in one pot, which is amazing. So that should produce really well. And what else? What was your favorite part of today? Huh. <laughs> Digging out the viney weeds and the, um, the trumpet vine near the, uh, the entrance over there is always a pleasure. Oh yeah, that was for sure my favorite. Um, the garlic, we planted this in the fall. This looks really good. Um, we also planted up tulips here. Like each one of these markers was a row of tulips. And this is all that came up. They have a bowl eating their bulbs. So that's really disappointing, but I see the holes. So we're gonna work on getting some hardware cloth underneath these beds this season. Probably won't happen all at once, but um, yeah, I'm excited. The peonies, so we put these in two years ago, um, just as kind of this size, and now they're really filling out. So when these leaf out, these are gonna be amazing. We're gonna get some blooms on them this year. It's a really wet kind of last couple weeks, so they are just like going gangbusters. But anyway, got some peas in. So we got some snap peas and some um, snow peas. So those should do really well. For some reason, I can't get this. Um, there we go. Sometimes they don't always sit right when they're in two pieces. But, so that's that. So that's a day. We're calling it a day for today. Um, tomorrow, we'll probably get in some sweet pea vines to grow up along the back lattice. Uh, fence line. We got some snapdragons going in. What else? We got some parsley going in. So some more herbs and greens and then we're going to add layers of compost uh, into the gardens to sort of new, uh, fortify the soil for this season. Get the groundwork laid for all of the tomatoes and cucumbers that are coming up for planting in a couple weeks. But this garden's off to a good start. Don't you love the way that looks? I do. I like how it's so neat and it's just pretty, right? It looks orderly. Like it's like green and then they're like texture difference with the scallions and then the pop of red. I don't know. It's the little things that please me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
last day for this week in this garden. So we'll show you how it shaped up. And the final plans that we did, um, I actually found two of these terracotta planters that are sort of, they're plasticky, and I found two of the same size. So where I'm actually gonna put one on the first bed and one on the third bed to kind of give it balance. Um, gotta get some peony rings installed yet still, but obviously all of the cool season stuff is in here. Some herbs that like cool weather. Got the snapdragons in, planted four sweet peas. Um, that variety is Restormel, so that should be a nice, bright, beautiful, and fragrant uh, sweet pea. The peonies are just getting started. More snapdragons on this side to balance the other ones when they come up in bloom. Um, the perennial bed looks good. You can follow me. And then we have peas, the other planter to kind of offset the first bed. The garlic, we have some red onions in there. We cut back the hydrangeas and cleaned those out, fertilized them with holytone. Got the raspberries, which are actually flowering already. Um, raspberries are cleaned up and they look amazing. So they should get a few berries out of that this year. And then we just kind of cleaned up the stone. So if you take a look from this way, I'd say we did a pretty good job. Nice jump start on spring here. Um, well, obviously we'll have some of the um, warm season stuff coming up and being planted in two weeks. But for now, this is what I love about spring. It's my favorite time when everything is like new and fresh. There's no weeds, everything's weeded out. It's just ready for like awesome veggies and flowers. Uh, so hopefully this shapes up really pretty and we get lots of production this year. But yeah, that is a wrap. All right, so a little update, it is Time for the hot season, the warm season crops to go in. So we've been working on getting tomatoes in this garden. We got the potatoes in, basil, and I wanna give you an update of what it looks like. Check this out. Look how good everything is growing in. The lettuces look amazing. I love the alternating color. All the perennials, it's been very dry here. So some of the salvias are looking a little dried out, but we now have sprinklers running in here. Um, the snapdragons. Look how big the snapdragons got. We just snipped these back. So this is called pinching. You take the tops off and then these little side buds are going to end up producing separate stalks of flowers. Um, we got little tiny basil starts in. We have five different types of tomatoes. Um, they're just so cute. And then, oh my God. So this is the second spring that these peonies have been in and we bought them in like three gallon containers. They had one or two stalks the first year. And now look at these. Are these not the most amazing peonies? I love them. Um, so they're getting just ready to, uh, to bloom. Unfortunately, the homeowners are gonna be away while they bloom, but the perfect stage to harvest peony buds. So let's say they wanted to um, harvest them to enjoy when they got back from their trip. This is a little bit too premature. And this is like this marble stage. They're hard. What you want is the squishy, um, squishy marshmallow stage. Unfortunately, we don't have any. These are all like m as hard as marbles. That's not when you want to harvest them. So these will be ready. I want to say in a couple days, especially with this heat. Um, but you can see that these are starting, see how they're kind of squishy? They're getting softer and that's the perfect stage to harvest them. So you'll cut them all the way back to this bottom stem. You can wrap them in saran wrap. You don't even have to put them in water. You can just put them in the fridge and they'll stay um, until you're ready to use them. These are amazing. So I'm kind of sad they're not going to see them, but I will probably harvest some so that when they get back, they'll be able to see them bloom. So that's going to be kind of a surprise for them. Uh, but yeah, so everything's getting in. Potatoes are in. The peas, not loving the heat, but they're still doing their thing. But I just wanted to show you, this is like amazing. It's shaping up really well. These guys look amazing. I love this color. That is like such an amazing peony color. So yeah, so that's it for this garden and we'll be back to get pretty much the rest of this established and trellised and have to start netting the snapdragons so they don't fall over if we do get rain. Um, but things are gonna cool off next week. So that's gonna be exciting. So stay tuned, we're gonna have big updates on this garden. All right, so we are finally done. It is hot. 
I think Maddie's ready to go home. You ready to go home? Oh yeah, I'm so it's ready. It's rough, man. This is like high heat, no breeze at all. We are like filthy sticky, but I wanted to show you now that the mulch is down, we got some netting for the cup flowers to grow through. Um, so all of this is in, the dahlias are in. We put some marigolds in, some annuals um, in the planters. And we have, let's see, eggplants and beans. I can't even remember what we planted. It feels like we did it like five weeks ago, but it was just this morning, it's so hot. Um, potatoes. Cucumbers, all of these are weeded and mulch. Doesn't it look so much better with mulch? Looks like, way better. Mulch literally sophisticates any garden. Um, I did tie these up a little bit. Some of them have um, peony stakes, but this did not. And there's three different peonies here, three different white ones. So I kind of corralled them a bit. Put the dahlias in so that when the peonies are done with their thing, the dahlias will come out and shine. Um, oh, also. So we have, I put little basil starts um, in front of the tomatoes because basil and tomatoes just go together. Um, then we have some beans that we seed in here, eggplant, some marigolds in the back because honestly that's a, that's a spot that you can't reach to harvest anything really well. Um, and the tomatoes are gonna kind of take over. So until that happens, that'll kind of help keep the weeds down back there. Also give it a little bit of color throughout the season. Also help attract bugs and repel bad bugs. That is a benefit. Um, not a huge fan of marigolds, but they do work in some instances. And we put plugged in a couple little extra marigolds around the edges of the garden just to keep it, keep it colorful throughout the season. So this garden is finished for now. Might want to do some gardening in a bikini today. What do you want? Just trying to document a little bit of your planting today. Well, document it after you get this in. This is the last. That's too hot. What do you mean? The last row. Heirloom chrysanthemums going in. And sunflower Steve sunflowers. Wow, are those from the bird feeder? I just told you where they were from. No. Sunflower Steve. What's the difference? The price. It looks like we have a bunch of sunflowers growing where the bird feeder was. Yeah. We could probably bring some of those down here and plant them, right? Feel free to jump in. Uh, I think I'm kind of done. Feel like I did a lot of rototilling. Just, uh, yeah. Beat. There's only so much I can do. Where are you taking me for lunch? Home. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, nope. You can't go to lunch looking like this. I will and I shall. You'll scare half the patrons out of the restaurant. About, I'm not worried about anybody else. Well, you have a reputation in this town. We don't need them to call you Smelly Nelly. My name is Shelly. You could have went with Shel Smelly Shelly. Well, I could have, but... Is she tired to put, make the connection? It's funny. When I'm hot and tired, I just can't think clearly. So I can hardly even speak. Maybe you actually work today. Uh, I've worked more in the last two days than I think I have in two years. I agree. This is not what I signed up for. Get used to it. Everybody thinks I'm some lazy husband that walks around filming their wife. Let me tell you something, folks. I wish I was. I may turn into that grumpy guy. Turn into? Please. Please, Maybe real. it's time you come clean and tell everybody how wonderful of a husband I am. Well, show them. Grab a shovel, honey bunny. <laughs> how am I going to show them and shovel the at the same time? The proof is in the action, not the words. Yeah, well, maybe you should grab the camera and film me occasionally doing some hard work. I, I am too busy. I, that's not. That's your forte, not mine. I got to get stuff done. Well, I got it rototilled for you, and now it's time for you to get it done. We're about to see how well this soil is 
um, how fertile it is. You didn't test it, did you? I did not. No. Oh, don't walk through. Take the path. That's a good girl. Come here. She's getting smarter. Don't say hi to me. She's going around. She got yelled at twice to stop the couple celosia plants. Hello, my big girl. <laughs> Hello, my big girl. Come, you can come in. Come on. Yes. Did you see that? She just asked for permission to come next to me. Wow. She's a good girl. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. If I get down, I may not come She's up. like, Mom, it's time for an afternoon nap. No, she's a good girl. I know the farm. Oh! <laughs> the farm is hard work, isn't it? All these people to chase away. Oh. You ready to eat? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? I think you are. She hasn't seen one groundhog yet, has she? No. I haven't seen one either. The babies were all dead by the garage I don't, or by the barn. I don't know what happened. I, the mom, there was a dead one like a month ago. And then I think the babies came out and that must have been the mom because why else would they come out? Well, I hate to break it to you, but me and Cody played Rambo and we came you down. You did not. Here. I know better. You you would cry. You would be in therapy if you killed a freaking uh, groundhog. I cried after, but I, I held my composure. How do you know where to plant things? Like, how do you know? Like, you didn't know this morning. Hey, I'm putting these here. At this point, I'm pretty much planting wherever you've given me space to do so. This is, a, this is, there's no plan for this. This is getting in whatever I can, wherever I can. I think even Zoe is done for the day. You just what? Did you hear her? Yes. Flopping like around in the high grass because it's all water. And I don't blame her. I'm kind of tempted to jump in the pond over there, but. Can we? What, 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 what's the worst that could happen? I don't know. The daughter wants to go swimming. Algae eaters? No. Yeah, but they don't want us. You never know. Can we, can we jump in there? You can. Do we have to like get it tested to make sure it's not gonna like make us sick or anything? Yeah, so go jump in, take a swim, and we'll wait 15 minutes. See what happens. Yeah. All right, are we actually done for the day? I think so. I'm done. I can't handle anymore. Maybe we'll come back tonight and water. Maybe. Maybe not. But hey, yeah, look at we got a lot of progress done down here this weekend with two trays and I have to tell you this was like 10% of what I grew so look how look how much land it, it took to plant them well it's a good thing we bought the farm then time for a tractor I need to get this picked up we got to move this pile I got a to-do list now yeah to do honey buy a tractor I'm gonna finance one, zero percent. I mean, how you can't get any better than that. Well, good. Make payments. Great. Oh. Can't wait to see your business thrive. Yeah. Well, it, stuff's got to grow first. I don't see any beer cans in there. Not till later, honey bunny. I know. Maybe we should kick back a few. So I have a whole bunch of gladiola bulbs. Can we just get these in? They've sprouted. Look at. This always happens when I think we're done and you They look just... like toenails, see? They're sprouting already. Well, Tomorrow? good. Let's put them in a sock and call it a day. Tomorrow we'll get them in? Yes, we will. Tomorrow we'll be back. Look, the back of my... Can you... Is this wet? The back, like, underneath my knees where they bend from, like, doing all of the planting is, like, sweaty. It's gross. Yeah, you got sweaty uh, knee pits. Please edit that out. Look at this. Kids garden extraordinaire. So we're weeding the garlic once again and mulching this time. Look how nice that looks when it does have mulch on it. And that looks beautiful. Woo, looks great. And we're adding nutrients to the soil. This is the part that has not been done. Obviously, you can see the difference. Just looks so much better. And the other patch got edged. See that nice little straight edge over there. Um, we also mulched 
and have the sprinkler running because we can't do everything at once. We have the snapdragons, the lisianthus. Um, oh, it's looking good. We have some color too. Look at these lettuces. We have cilantro, more lisianthus. Look at that. I love doing color blocks like that in a garden. Hey, and you know what? Those lines aren't half bad. I mean, a little crooked, but that's to be expected with me. Have some ranunculus on the edges of this middle bed here and also on the far end. And then finally, we have some beets and carrots coming in along with some weeds. So I have to figure out what we're gonna do there. Beautiful lettuce, look at that. Oh my gosh, chives in the middle with, I gotta get that weed out of there at the bottom, but, and red lettuces. Ooh, I'm gonna get wet. Um, doesn't that look pretty though? I like planting pretty edibles and red lettuce does amazing. Look at that. And that is grown from seed. Is that not gorgeous? That is gorgeous. And the chives, I don't know. That just looks awesome. And you know what? I'm excited. This place is really starting to, to come together. Things are growing, garlic looks good. Lots of final touches to really make it like a garden where you can teach things and where there's tons of things going on and kids can learn and adults can learn, but we're starting. We have a very good head start. Um, and one other thing we're gonna do too, see this little island circle of weeds? There's lots of fun perennials in here. Chives look amazing early on always, but whew, look at that, birds in there. Um, but we have some yarrow in there, which I'm gonna leave. Day lilies, we'll see what color those are. Some iris on both sides of the circle, and then it's really matted with crabgrass and garbage. So I gotta clean all this out, and then I'm gonna add perennials, and that's gonna look amazing. Like this circle garden, it's gonna be a very sweet perennial garden display. So. And then these boxes still need some work. These are our herb black boxes. As you can see, there is some dill, some leftover seeds, maybe some borage it looks like that's coming back from last year. Parsley's not doing so hot, but I think it's because it hasn't been watered. Got some rosemary in the center, golden oregano, which needs water really badly. And then the perennial oregano, which has been here for years and obviously is very well rooted and lots of thistle coming up in the center because that's what thistle does. It doesn't matter how many times you take it out of here. It's so annoying. Um, I think I'm gonna put some fabric and cardboard down there and then weed chips, uh, wood chips on top. Hopefully that will help, but look at this. Oh, it's starting to shape up. It's getting color. It's very exciting. What's taking you so long? It's buried in the dirt. I told you not to wear black clothes. You work on a flower farm now. You're gonna be spent by 10.30 in the morning. It's my signature look. Yeah, well, the signature is laziness. It's gonna be a big yeah. L. Please. Yeah, don't forget, you're getting paid by the hour. There you go. Wow. And he, whoa, there's a big snake. What kind of snake is that? Holy moly. I wouldn't get too close. Is that a milk snake? Watch out. I can't see it. You're in the way. I want to make sure it heads towards you. That looks like a milk snake, I guess. You don't really care. Is he alive? He's probably shocked after all these years. All right, Cody. Sorry. I know it's not in the job detail, but it looks like snake removal. There's another project you'll be working on today. Uh, I think we can leave that guy be. What do you mean? He's, He's got to go. He's not harming anybody. Well, I have two kids. That looks like a tiny boa constrictor. Oh, what do you think? He just moved. Whoa, baby. <laughs> Hopefully he moves in your... Oh, it looks like... It looks like there's a hole or he's coming down this way. Oh, he's got a hole. Uh... For goodness snake, you let it go, Cody. It's unacceptable. Uh, uh, really, you're gonna have to take on danger here. We got about six groundhogs that are the size of a little pony, but we know that you like my little pony, so 
Hopefully, you That's won't be afraid to tackle one. That's just a rumor. Yeah. Going around. So, if that snake went underground, that means he's probably got a house somewhere. I mean, he's probably got a hole. What about... Have you ever seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark? Um, and no. when they found the tomb and it was full of snakes? That's uh, before my time. I'm starting to think we might have a problem here. Do you think it's possible that that snake may have a bunch of his buddies down there in this concrete thing? I wouldn't want to look. Personally. Well, you're going to have to look. We got to figure this out. So. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Have you ever seen jackass and bam rjr getting thrown into the snake pit i don't i don't watch juvenile stuff like that i'm too busy <laughs> educating myself cody maybe that's your problem maybe it's time for you to grow up and be a man okay. instead of a jackass all right so grab a screw gun and you're going to be climbing down there and if you feel more comfortable i'll get you an old horse whip and you can start humming Indiana Jones because it's time, buddy, to go into the Temple of Doom. How much am I getting paid again? It, it, we're not going to switch your pay up every time you have to do a hard job. You're working on a farm. If you don't like it, take it up with my wife. What do you think is going to be more difficult? You know, Climbing in a concrete bin of snakes or trying to convince my wife that you don't want to? I don't think your wife would make me go down there. Well, that's not up to you to decide. I already talked to her. She said it should be investigated. My wife does not like snakes. She's afraid of them. And if she's going to be over here, look. Look where her garden is. It's right over there, Cody. So okay. if we have a temple of snakes over here behind the barn, we may have to address it. I... I elect her protege, Maddie, to take care of her. Maddie, yeah. I elect Maddie. Maddie's afraid of a grasshopper. Come on. Let's go. Oh, man. If you want to impress ladies out there, they would really be impressed yeah. if you confronted your fear of snakes right now. Stick your hand in there and see what happens. It's either, it's either a groundhog or a huge snake. I don't like this. I don't like it either. i use this. Stick your, stick your phone down there and take a picture and see what it is. It's either going to be a slithering snake or a groundhog giving you the finger. You got a light on that camera? Yeah. Just the hole. There's nothing there. I didn't see any animals peering in, uh, peering at the camera. What What do you see? It's definitely dug out by an animal, though. Is there like a big rock that's ready to roll down out of the hole, or? <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing like that. So, is that it? That's the verdict? There's no snakes? There's no snakes, and I don't have to get in there. Wow. That's the verdict. All right, well, I'll show this video to my wife, and we'll see what her verdict is. So, what is the lesson you just learned? Um, maybe I should go work for your wife instead. No, that's not. And you don't have to brown nose her. I'm not showing her this video. Um... The lesson is, it's called, have some incentive. Okay. So and some incentive? ambition. What's the incentive for me doing this? Is to impress me, your boss. And in turn, I may actually be so impressed that I would increase your pay, possibly. Wow, look at that. Is that it? Is that the only thing that motivates Generation Y? Yeah, generation dollar signs. Look, folks, I am not speeding this up. This is actual footage. 
I said possibly. I didn't say you were getting a raise. I didn't say you were getting a raise. I said possibly. Unfortunately, my wife is sending this company down the crapper with all the expenses that we weren't thinking about. Like your labor down here, it's getting a little expensive. So I just did all that running around? Well, I was, uh, I was trying to lead up to the fact that we might have to let you go because we can't <laughs> afford to pay what Generation Y wants. So maybe if you were patient enough mm -hmm. to sit there and listen before you do something, this wouldn't have happened. So unfortunately, yeah, we may have to actually cut your pay or let you go. But I'll let you know. All right. Thanks anyway. I'm definitely impressed to see what you could have possibly done if you were paid more. <laughs> Good job, Cody. Great. I mean, yeah. Uh, I am proud. You can't fire me if I quit first. <laughs> yeah, right? Please. So if anyone knows me, I am a huge perennial person, but I do love annuals for planters. This year, my planters actually are thriving and looking amazing. I don't know if it's all the rain or what, um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about planters because I know you get some um, planter recipes that call for four plants or um, five plants or three plants but I can tell you if you want planters to look full and lush and and to just spill over and constantly have color you gotta stuff them so this planter is 26 inches wide so the diameter is 26 inches and there's got to be at least a dozen plants in here so I have stuffed this literally with the calibrecoa lantana um, sweet potato vine, hummingbird mint, zinnias, geraniums, and this sort of spiller, uh, I can't even remember, silver falls, I believe that's called, and these little purple button flowers. Um, I've stuffed this. So I bought six packs of annuals, and I basically planted this up and really just stuffed them right in and let them all grow in together. Originally, I had a blue salvia um, it was called black and blue salvia, which I loved, but the problem was every time I kind of went to, to pick it up, um, pick up the branches, they would fall off. So I had to replace it because they just kept breaking and I was so annoyed, but the hummingbirds love it. So I ended up replacing that with the hummingbird mint and it's doing great. They all kind of grow in together um, and mesh and just are full. And I have two of these. This is the other one. And this one, obviously this purple, these little button flowers are doing the, like amazing. This is actually taking off in this basket. Um, but yeah, so this is just as full. It's got different colored um, lantanas and, and just the bright combination of flowers. They're doing amazing. So one thing is with the Calibrecoa, they say you don't have to deadhead, but sometimes you'll get this empty spot up in the top because they're all sort of blooming at the bottom. You can give these a haircut and they will start to send up more flowers here to fill in. So they are very, there's kind of, they're high maintenance in that you have to feed this basket all the time. So we've had a lot of rain and it's been watered well, but you definitely have to feed them because there's so many plants stuffed in these that you have to give them extra nutrients. Just the regular potting mix with the um, fertilizer built in, not really enough. If you want them to, to like really produce lots of flowers, you have to supplement. So I feed with the with the Neptune's Harvest Flower Rose and Flower Care, um, and I just I just hit like this with half of a um, watering can. So they they each get a gallon of the fertilizer, and then just constant watering. But these are a very they're prolific bloomers. We have a short growing season, so stuffing perennials in this would kind of be not as beautiful as this. And I love these because they're out in the patio area and they're really just constant color. Whereas all the other perennials kind of bloom and die back. This is where you want to pack your color, especially when you have um, people over or just because you're always eating in this area and you're just out here, you always want this to look good. So I thought I'd go over a couple different things that I do for the planters. And this year they look especially good with all the rain. So um, you don't have to just plant four or five in a container. You can stuff them. Just know you have to kind of over fertilize 
keep them watered and if they start getting bare in certain areas don't be afraid to give them a haircut they will respond they'll come back and they'll fill in great so try it out looks like Blake's trying to earn his allowance for once what do you mean five dollars a week if you do all your chores. Five dollars a week? Yeah. More like 20. Nah, sorry buddy, inflation. How about 20 every two weeks? First you gotta get out of bed before 11 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. You got banker's hours. So right now we're in the process of uh, building a stone wall. Right buddy? I've been taking stones out of the pit and just building it as we go. Let's go walk up a little bit. Let's show them what it looks like. I love stone walls. It's like putting together a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. We collected those two big rocks. It did some damage to the back. So. Yeah, well, we, we find these huge rocks and what we have to do is back the tractor up and then try to roll the rock onto the wagon it's pretty tough especially when there's only one strong guy amongst us sorry blake i'll try to pull my own weight next time all right buddy I think it's here. we started here about an hour ago look at it you can tell all the dirty rocks that's what we just did in about an hour and boy, oh boy, the humidity. I'm telling you what, my socks are like sponges, buddy. I have Crocs down. I, I can hear know. my athlete's feet, the fun guy. I can hear him screaming in my sneakers. I have Crocs. They're waterproof. I don't need to worry. There you go. That might be too much. Yeah, go down a little bit. Forward, there you go. All right, I'm going to try to roll that rock into that wagon. Boy, I wish we could do that big one back there. That one? Yeah. That one. If somebody would eat some spinach, you really got to start eating your vegetables there, buddy. I have been. You're not Iron Man. You're Tin Foil Man. <laughs> Come on. Those vitamins you're eating aren't doing the trick. I might have to ask Emma Lou for help. What do you think, Emma Lou? What? Think we could move that big rock back there, you and me? Probably no. not. No? I'm definitely not holding that rock. Why? Afraid to get your hands dirty? Yeah. Yeah, both of you are. No, I'm not. I just say, they look pretty clean to me. Yeah. That's what I do when I go to work. I just put paint on my pants and tell everybody I was actually doing something when I was sitting there on my phone all day. Just don't tell anybody I told you that, all right? It's between you and me. This is behind the scenes, folks. This is what you don't see. The glamour, the glory. That only happens when my wife... We could be in the air conditioning right now. Yeah, we could be in air conditioning, watching some horror movie or something. Hey, hey, give a hoot. What? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Especially on your own property, pal. I think I can. I don't think you can. You can try it, can but it? Can it? looks like a dinosaur egg. You're gonna have to roll it and then flip it, and I don't see it happen. Maybe it will. Kid's been watching me. Oh boy. That's gonna be heavy, son. I don't think that's. Yeah, that might be a little much. Yeah, you did good. Good job. What are you doing over there? Huh? Making muddy bath water, I see. Boy, can you kids keep clean? Yeah. You can. I bang clean let me all see day. Your, let me see your hands now. That's how you do it, buddy. Not dirty. Yeah. My whole shirt's dirty. All right. Morning well, for three days. Let's see if we can't get this rock on. But I'm going to 
front door! Let's go! Ah! Oh, smoke! I think I got a hernia. What are you doing, Jax? You're getting uh -huh. all cruddy, bud. I definitely will not be bringing you down to the farm. Get you rolling around in the hay. Look at this dog. He's dumb. You getting a tan? Are you getting a tan? Enjoying life, you are not a farm dog, and never will be. That position has gone to Zoe, and you're not a garden dog like Cleo. Cleo is a great garden dog. She just sits around. She doesn't cause problems, but you, every day there's an issue with the Jackster. Gonna have to start learning how to behave there, buddy. Take a clue from Cleo. All right, buddy, don't get too much, son. Gonna overheat. Look at him. I think he's related to one of those little pot-bellied black pigs because he loves just getting dirty. All right, so another project we're working on this year this is a new project for us, but we have an island bed uh, that the homeowner was under the impression is in full sun. And what happens is that it gets morning sun. So a lot of the reason that the plants and shrubs that are put in here, they're not doing that great. And they just kind of look sickly. Two reasons. One, it's not getting enough sun. And two, the deer love everything in here. So what we're going to do and what we've started to do is clean out all of the matted weeds, all of the suckers that are coming up. And we're starting to group things that grow together uh, or group things that are the same type in um, drifts and what that what that's going to do is when they bloom we're going to get nice long drifts of color because that's really what you want in an island bed so all of this got cleaned out we kind of rototilled in here because of the roots and the mattedness of all the weeds and so now we sort of have a clean slate that we're working through and we're gonna put some sunnier things, maybe some part sun things in the center here where it's getting the most sun. But as you can see under here, it's getting filtered light. You can kind of see as the sun moves, it's getting a little bit of dappled and filtered light. So we're gonna throw some shade things in there, um, like ladies mantle, hosta, grasses, that sort of thing. So this is gonna be full and this is gonna be an ever evolving project. We're gonna do this in stages. So this year we're gonna have a certain budget to add plants. And so we're just gonna make them balanced. We're gonna get drifts of things and plant them so that it looks like it's starting to fill in. And then every year we'll add to the gaps. So that is the goal on this island bed. Um, the other project that we're working on, lots of, lots of weeding here, but she has lots of established gardens. This is really cool. This is kind of a zigzag path to a vegetable garden that's fenced in. And she's got peonies growing all up here. These are really established old peonies. So they're doing really well. And it's just sort of an informal border. So we just weeded those. Oh no. And then what we're doing, if you want to just peek over here, this is a fenced in garden that has vegetables. Come closer. And in the back there where the orange stakes are, we're actually going to do two diagonal, um, dahlia beds so she ordered some dahlia tubers and we're going to put in a new dahlia bed you can see there's a tree swallow in there um, that spot just got rototilled so we're going to shape that up a bit and add some cut flowers to this garden so i'm really excited about that um, the only problem is the tree swallows are nesting right now so when you go in there we're going to show you what happens uh she's going to show you what happens <laughs> okay. all right go ahead no 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 let me record you going in go ahead dude where do i walk I'm, just walk to where the orange stakes I'm are <laughs> And this is what happens. This is, you know, tree swallows are gorgeous. They're like a teal color and black and white. But I'm man, when they're nesting, they're territorial. So close my eye. <laughs> Go ahead, keep walking. So 
It doesn't matter if you're quiet or not. You're just going to get some lovely activity. All right, open your eyes. They're not even coming. Yeah, I'm told They're not. Good. They're not. Okay. So this is the dahlia bed. I'm going to come over here. And this is such a cute garden. Like, I love it. It's got sort of this horseshoe shape, and then it's got some pergolas, and it's got this really cute setup of raised beds. Um, gorgeous crab apples, and then lots of sort of mixed things around the border that um, I would love to sort of straighten up and clean up and get in better condition. So anyway, so here's the, the dahlia bed. The original plan was to take um, the soil up between this post and this post at a diagonal and then that post over here to that post um my husband rototilled all the way through it <laughs> which is fine but we're gonna sort of um edge this out and make two rectangles and then maybe a little walkway we'll put some stones um for a walkway right through so you can get to this what was a fountain so i think this might shape up and our little mishap might turn into something that actually will work out quite cute um, in this garden. So Yay! we good? So we didn't get attacked. So that's exciting. Yeah, until I do on the way out. No, I think they're fine. They're, they're going to eat or they're feeding their babies. So there's two of us in here. They're intimidated. Um, I'll just leave you in here and see what happens. Yeah, heck no. <laughs> heck no. <laughs> All right. So that's the plan for this job. He's chill. He's cool. He's like, okay, she's just going to work in here. Can you come in near my nest? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what he's thinking. What's he, up, babe? He actually said it he's out loud. He's actually looking like this. Where are you? Oh, that would be great if he just, like, kind of dropped one on the on the lens. <laughs> <laughs> or on your head. No, no. All right, so good. Maybe we will be able to get the dahlia. There's there. one flying in the air. They soar like little airplanes. I'm sure if they hit you, that it's not fun. But I've never been hit. I have felt the wind of them getting so close to me. My hair moved. Yeah, probably because you screamed and jumped out of the way. Well, oh, it did. I, yeah, it's scary. When you don't know or expect that to happen. And they just come right at your eyes and you think they're going to... Uh -uh. Yeah, it's awful. But but after a while, apparently here, they just get used to you really quickly. All right, you ready to go? Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's go dump it in the woods. I've had a very long hot day. I'm taking out the trash. My employee is not very productive in the heat. Yeah, you got yourself a Cody. You got yourself a Cody, dude. Uh, you know what happened? We ate lunch and we were like both like, okay, we need a nap. It's so hot. So do you want to come clean about this rototiller and tell everybody this lovely story that your husband has had to go through the last week and a half. Not just you. Yeah. I got the brunt of it, lady. You're gonna get the brunt of it. <laughs> Do not buy anything online, folks. Our brand new rototiller has to go back in the shop. Yep, I used it one weekend and boy, it couldn't handle it. An old guy like me put that rototiller down. It's it's leaking oil where it shouldn't, so... And it just got fixed in that location. Uh, yeah, an hour and a half away. An hour. An hour. An hour and one minute, to be exact. Not if you follow the speed limit, it isn't. Wow, oh, actually, you're right. It's only 48 minutes if you actually drive like me. Yeah, well, good. Back it up. Maybe you can take this um, thing we in. We need to do something about the garbage in the pond. Do we get a pond aerator for that? Uh, let's worry about your garden first. I'm going to get a damn tractor. We I'm finally sorry. got water. You know what? I, I've been, I know we're, we're like investing and we will get it all back. I'm not, I'm not wasting any more time. This is, this is ridiculous. We're well, watering. We're, we're like the, the fields are growing too fast. Like this is a very big learning curve and you can't do this with a rototiller and a home riding mower. You can't. I have. What do yes. you mean you and can't? You know what? You can't because you're spending all the nights doing this and, and look how much land we have to take care of. So, sorry. No. The sole member of Guiding Green Thumbs LLC has spoken. Yeah, well, you better have a farm fundraiser or something, lady. God, I'm going to have to promise people seeds and dahlia tubers and daylily seeds to help fund me a tractor. Or maybe you could just hold your damn horses. It's 0% interest. So, honestly, even if we can run some type of a promotion for... The next three years, 
I, we got to do something. I, we can't do this. I'm not, and I'm not, you know, the, the qualified, no, certified dealers for Troy built and all these, they're none local. They're like an hour away. It's such horse crap. <laughs> Sorry, but I, you know what? It's too hot and too late. I'm behind. Everything is dying. I don't This job is hard enough without obstacles thrown in uh, my way. You know way. what? That's the point. That is the point. It is like, you know, we're already behind and this is just like, okay, so now instead of getting my dahlia tubers in and we're in a short growing season area, I'm, I'm waiting. Now I have to wait for this thing to come back and then drive another hour up there to go get it. It's just annoying. I'm going to buy a damn new tractor. I'm just telling you. I don't care if you divorce me or not. You'll come back. Uh, well, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Nin I might, 90, 98% sure. Uh, you just might be moving in here. I won't have to come back to nothing. You know what? I feel like I live here anyway. You know, sometimes... <laughs> Matt, we, oh, we, we've worked two full days this week. It's a short week. And it feels like we've worked a week already. And it's not even two days in. I'm just like exhausted. And you know what? It's like, it's frustrating. All of this, all of these hiccups and bumpies. I feel like Mario in Donkey Kong. I'm trying to get your garden rototilled, but some and big- we got the hammers. Yeah, a big gorilla keeps throwing obstacles in my way. And big barrels keep coming at us. Barrel, and they're not barrels of money, so we can't collect. They're huge slate rocks oh. that hit my ankles. Well. We did finish a job today, so that's good. This stuff looks like it's about dried up. We're I was, gonna have, we're gonna have, can you make tea out of Celosia and Bells of Ireland? <laughs> I don't know, we might have to dry the leaves. Well. The basil, the basil might work. It's a learning curve, unfortunately. I might have to turn this into a beer. It could be dead man's curve if we keep this up. We gotta water this. This is brutal, this heat is killing me. And now the, the weather says it's not gonna be raining next week, so. We're gonna, it's gonna be a rough year to have a flower farm. I gotta get that, I gotta get irrigation and a tractor, so. So sorry, am sorry I the that. Uber today? I'm bringing the rototiller to the shop? Well, I can, and you can bring our daughter to dance and our son to piano lessons. Oh, take your pick. I'll take the rototiller. <laughs> I'll take the rototiller. Yeah, exactly, one or the other. Send me the address. Um, you just have to put in, I'll text it to you. Thank you. Yes. It's not hard, but the, once you get off the highway, you go exit 25 off 90, and then when you, once you get off, it's a bunch of back roads. Am I going to get as good of service as you did, or am I going to be sitting there waiting? Well, I didn't get very good service because I'm bringing it back less than four days later. Well, that's Something. what happens when you leave your chapstick at home. It's hard to... It's very funny. What? No, you can take it the wrong way. I wasn't, I didn't mean anything like that, bud. What, what, what does that have to do with anything? You're looking all pretty. You don't wear lipstick, you wear chapstick. I do. So, that's your Maddie dirty mind. I, Maddie said I got that from her, except she's half my age. I know, we'll, we'll be going somewhere and it's like, I can't go Oh anywhere. my God, I don't have chapstick. Honestly, <laughs> all I can focus on is my dry lips. If I can't have chapstick on them, oh, I, I can't do anything until I get chapstick. Well, maybe if they stop flapping, <laughs> they wouldn't dry out so fast. You know, I, that might be a legit reason. Well, good. Don't peel out over the garden hose because we don't need to buy oh, another one of those. by the way, when you back down that way and you back up, almost hit that well. It's really in a bad spot for me. Well, I need, we'll I need just a truck, have it moved. I need a truck with a rear camera. I'm used to my truck and this doesn't have one. So there's many things that I almost hit when I'm backing up. It's not good. Are you going to get that truck before or after the tractor? Well, I, I might need a big truck to tow the tractor on the trailer that I'm gonna need to get it here. So I, stay tuned. Yeah. I have lots of stuff coming <laughs> stay your way. Tuned. <laughs> I can't talk anymore. I can't discuss all these matters. No, get out of here, please. Ah, oh, I have a headache just hearing it. Never ending chores.